والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new Inspirations show. Today, inshallah, we have a very beautiful subject in hand. Something very interesting that is relevant to every one of us. And it has a profound impact, actually, if one really gets into grips with it properly. Today, as we have come to very beautiful conclusions about the reality of this world and the creator of this world, and what our existence really means, inshallah, today we will see why faith, why belief, why Iman is so important in our lives. We will set some kind of comparison between believers and non-believers and see who really lives in happiness, who, is really, who really lives in contentment and who really understands himself and his world better. Inshallah, before we get into this, let me uh, welcome our guests. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nice to have you here with us today. Let me just recap and sum up what we said previously so that we have a new start today. Okay, we talked about the reality we said first, and the main concept for anyone to live a life of success, a life of reason, first of all, is to free yourself from all preconditioning and always find out the truth for yourself. Don't depend on what other people tell you. Always verify. And this is the scientific method in research, actually. They always say, collect information, try to find information, bring it, analyze it, put it to, put it, put it to the test, okay? contemplate, ponder on this information, then arrive at the correct conclusions. This is what Islam exactly tells us. So all our decisions are the product or the function of scrutiny and careful study. This is how success, this is how a responsible kind of character can be developed. So inshallah, we have uh, grasped this beautiful concept that will bring us to real happiness, that will bring us to understand the real meaning of life. Then we move to talk about uh, the first step that we can really take in trying to understand this world afresh is to contemplate the creation contemplate the universe. And we talked about some magnificent facts, some shocking statistics about the reality of this world, how vast it is, how organized it is, how uh, carefully it was designed to, in order to make human life on earth possible. We mentioned some quotations, some statements from atheist scholars who came to the conclusion that there must be a creator for this world. It could never come about by chance. There is no way no possibility, no probability at all for this world to come about by chance or through evolution. Then we came up with the conclusion that God must necessarily exist. There must be a creator for this world. Any logical human being, any reasonable person could only arrive at this conclusion. Because to say or to believe or to think that this world came about through any means like chance, like uh, random, like uh, evolution or whatever, all this is nonsensical at all. We prove that, we've proved that, alhamdulillah, uh, I, I believe clearly for anyone who really is looking for the truth. Now, then we arrived, or we talked about how to take the next step. How do we know our Creator? You know, many people present different claims about the Creator, about the God, about the true way of life. We try to put this to the test. We try, we try to make a very good use of our time to arrive at the correct conclusion. And we came up with the conclusion that the message that God, the Creator, sent us, because He's merciful, He cares for us, He sent us the Qur'an. We talked about the Qur'an, this beautiful book. And we analyzed some of the facts, some of the points in it that prove that it is from the creator of the heavens and the earth. Because it mentioned facts that no one could ever know at the time of its revelation. It must be the creator, there's no way. And until today, and in the future, there will always be miracles, there will always be new findings that will prove the Qur'an. And this is part of the challenge that the Qur'an, that the creator set in the Qur'an for any human being, for any creature to bring anything that is like Qur'an, or even from any angle resembles the Qur'an. There is no way that this could happen. 
Now today we will talk about or answer the question as some questions came to me personally. They said, why do you talk about belief? What's the point about? What's the point of it? Why do you discuss the origin of the universe, the creator? Some people claim to live a very good life, live uh, or lead a, a happy life, successful life. They say, we don't need the concept of the creator or thankfulness to the creator or being grateful to the creator. We don't need that. We lead a very good life. So why do you talk about this? Now, let's go back to our first concept, which is let's put everything to the test. Don't take anything for granted. Let's put this to the test. Do really people in this world live in happiness? Now this is a question, if you have any propositions, any answers about this, any thoughts, let's share them together. Please, doctor. Uh, sorry, I always forget the mic. Okay. Uh, why we should believe in the God? If we do comparison between believers and disbelievers in the world. Okay, believers and disbelievers, comparison. Yes, yes. comparison. You see, the percent of suicidal attempts in the believers is very low. Yes. Our God created us. Almost non-existent, even. Yes. Anyway. Very low, yeah, and, yes. uh, compare, compared with the disbelievers. Yes. Our God created us. Yeah. The main things which affect our life is the psychological state of the person. And this psychological state, it will not be, as we know, it will make you success person successful person if you are not obeying the commands of your God. I agree with you. For example, 100%, yes. my leader in the, my duty, my work, yes. he wants from me to do this and this and this. If I disobey, I will be banished. Yeah, you will Psychologically, be I will be not satisfied. Yes. If I will be satisfied, I have to obey the commands of my leader. Okay. How is the creator, not the leader? Yes. The mean psychological satisfaction it will be from obeying the commands of our God. That's a good proposition, doctor. Yes. But uh, the thing is here, uh, we're trying to present this issue from all perspective. Yes. Okay. So the thing is, if someone, an atheist, is watching us now, and I would consider that, yes. I believe some of them are watching us now, and, okay, they will say to you, prove it to me. Yes, prove I will it to prove me. it to you. Okay. Many rich persons, he have all the things he wants. Okay. Money, yes. places, towns, uh, lands, everything, but he is not happy. Yes. Why? Poor persons, he has yes. nothing, Yes. but he is believing in the God. Okay. When you see him, okay. oh, I'm happy, thank okay. you. He has nothing to okay. eat, but he yes. is happy. Okay, but, but actually statistics, to be honest, yes. I made a, you know, an extensive research when it comes to suicide and depression, to be honest. In the rich countries, those who commit suicide, the vast majority of them are the poor ones, not the rich ones. And I was shocked because yes. I, many times I heard that the, uh, actually the, the rich ones are the ones who commit suicide. But actually the statistics indicate that actually the poor ones are the ones that are more likely to kill themselves, yes. why? but the rich ones are less. That's why. Yeah. We, are, we are not comparing believers with disbelievers. All of them, they are disbelievers. Yes. You have to compare between the believers themselves. Yes. Okay. You see a rich person, he has everything in the life, he's happy, not happy. Yeah. I Please ask can him, you just keep the money? He is, he is not happy. I ask yes. him, why are you not happy? Yeah. I, I, I personally agree with you, doctor, but the yes. thing is, we have to present it from all perspectives. Like, for example, Bangladesh is a Muslim country. Yes. It's a Muslim country, but it has the highest rate of suicide in Asia and one of the highest rates of suicide in the whole world. Almost, almost, uh, between 60 and 70 people kill themselves out of 100,000. In Bangladesh? In Bangladesh, a Muslim country, totally Muslim country. So, many people say because they are poor. Yes, I will answer you. Yes. Because if Bangladesh is a good Islamic country, there will be social cooperation between yes. people. Yes. If I don't need anything, yes. my neighbor will help me. Yep. My colleagues, my fellows will help yes. me. It's not present. I was there. This is not present in all people there in Afghanistan yes. or in Pakistan or in yes. Bangladesh, you see? Okay, but the thing is, uh, I'm, I'm trying to present the other perspective or the other point of view. They will say to you, you just said now, uh, Muslim countries, and when we talked about like the West, you said all of them are disbelievers or non-believers yes. or non-Muslims, let's say. Yes. Okay? And in, now we brought to you uh, very strong evidence, which is Bangladesh, a totally Muslim country, but still one of the highest rates in the world. So this basically, I personally don't disagree with you. I agree. 
But the thing is, we have to be realistic, we have to be logical when we present things. We have to break them down. Now, let me, uh, let's still go back to, we will come to this point because it's, but a bit ahead of now, okay? But let's talk, let's answer, still answer, you need an answer to the question, okay? Why do we need to talk about faith? Why do we need to consider it in our lives? Why do we need to think? Why is, why is it so crucial, so substantial? Please talk. Thank you. Uh, as a believer, when I believe that there is one God, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us uh, not to kill, to kill ourselves, okay? Uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, uh, I wonder for the matter of uh, Muslim, Ajab al Amr al Muslim. All of his matters is God, are God. If a good thing happens to him, he thanks God. But if a bad thing happens to him, he, he be patient with that. So it's, you know, if you are a believer, you are not going to, you are not going to harm yourself, you are not going to, hell, to kill yourself, you are going to be patient and you are going to be thankful for God. That's a very good point. But I need someone to break down, still answer very directly the question, why do we need to talk about faith? Why is it so important? Please take mic. Bismillah ar-Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the holy book, Surah Al-Asr, let me say it in, in Arabic first and okay. in English. Wal-Asr, inna al-insana lafi khusr, illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu al-salihati wa tawasaw bil-haq wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Meaning, uh, age and man is lost except those who believe, who believe. And in, uh, who believe and uh, do, do righteous deeds? Yes, and, and do good deeds, good deeds uh, enjoying the rights enjoy the and enjoying the patience. Okay. Uh, we conclude from this four qualities of becoming happy or unhappy. Yes. For the human, for the mankind, to believe in this first uh, phrase or condition to believe in God, to accept God Subhanallah, so Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Uh, and then Okay, L let me just try to sum up so that we can make a better use of our time So you say if someone believes in God and the Creator, in Allah Okay, and do good deeds yeah. And enjoy what is good, give good advice And then enjoy people to be patient These will be among the happy people Yes Okay, and the answer is how? Oh, the question is how? Now if someone doesn't believe in the Quran I would like to consider this kind of people as well. Okay. How, break it down to me. Oh, I'm a bit, you know, suspicious. I need to understand more about the Quran, more about Islam. You're telling me if you believe, you'll become happy. To me, I can't, still, I can't comprehend that. Now, the question is really, how, why is import, uh, faith so important? How does it make us feel better? How does it make us live a better life? Muhammad, you had something to say? Please take the mic. Try to keep the mic, please, at a constant okay. distance. <coughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Well, actually, answering the question, why do we need to believe? Actually, I, I think it's, it has a, philosoph a philosophical side. Yeah. I mean, technically speaking, we, we cannot say that there are people who are disbelievers. I mean, who doesn't believe in God, believes in something else. So I believe that it's innate in a human being to have a certain belief. Okay. To have a certain conception yes. of a certain thing. I think we agreed on this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So even the, we have said in, in, in a previous uh, episode that even an atheist believes, believes in the non-existence of God. Yes. So I believe it's something innate. You can't say that uh, this person is a believer okay. and the other but is still a disbeliever. I need an answer to the question. Why is belief so important? What does it do to us? Why is it important? The be uh, belief is so um, important because uh, the uh, be uh, belief of God uh, make uh, the stability of uh, our life very good. It makes stability, but this sort of was said. But I need it. I need you to break it down. Please, okay? Can you please? Uh, before we answer this question, I believe what we need to do is to understand what belief is all about. Yes. Belief is uh, knowing who to worship and how to worship him. Okay. You need to know the description of God. Whatever God means to you, you need to know who he is, who created you, who put you here, what are you here for. Mm -hmm. That's what belief is all about. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, after that, how can I worship? How can I have established a relationship with him? How can I communicate with him? That is what really belief is all about. Mm -hmm. And that's how you start elevating the 
uh, 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 or the strengthening the level of belief step by step. Mm -hmm. The more you open up that communication line, the better of, 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 of that relationship becomes with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. Uh, of course, I say Allah because I'm a Muslim, but yes. for others, they need that higher authority to look up to because there's definitely, as we said, 300 billion galaxies. Okay, there you is... hit the nail right on the top. Okay. I, I mean, is... I can, I can uh, go forever, but I, yes. I would rather stop so we can take yes. over that. And, and yes, I... we'll, we'll take the following points later on. But because you just hit the nail, I can't stop here. Uh, the uh, human soul, there are needs in it. We said we are created. Everything created has needs. Like the earth in order to, or the vegetation to grow, it needs water. It needs water. Like, uh, you know, everything, hum human beings, they need nutrition. Other things as well. What do we need as human beings? Every human being has something in his heart that causes him to ask the questions. There are very fundamental questions in, in the mind of every human being. The questions are, who am I? Who am I? Where did I come from? What is this life all about? Now we ask these questions. L let me ask some of you who come from business background, like uh, Brother Jamal and like uh, Basil as well. Like when you start some kind of business, what are the questions that you always ask? Before you start, set up a business, there must be something that you have to, uh, some questions you have to get some answers for before you start. Well, you always definitely have to... Uh... If you look at something you want to assess, you want to, you want to establish something called feasibility study. Mm -hmm. Is this going to be sustained for a long time? Is this going to stop? Is this going to keep going? That's what you're trying to do. Okay. Do you ask what's the product or what is the service that you provide? Absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. Do you, how do you perform your services or produce this product? Oh, the how, the where, the, the yeah. yeah the WH questions are so fundamental in the human soul. We all need. Imagine with business, we do this. Even in science, we always ask these questions, who, why, what, when. We always ask these questions because we cannot go about doing anything without having the answers to these questions. Do you think they don't come to our minds as human beings? I know because we grew up as Muslims, sometimes, as I said, we take it for granted. We don't think about it. But, but believe me, many people in different parts of the world, they always, you know why they get themselves immersed in drugs? in alcohol, in women, some of them, they, they are workaholic, as they say. They work, some, some people work 70 hours a week. You know why? Because they can't stop for a moment to think about who they are. What is this life all about? Where did we come from? Where are we going? Because if they start thinking about this, you know the black holes in the space that, that suck everything in them? That's exactly the same thing. And whenever they start thinking about who we are, where we came from, what are we doing here, where are we heading to? You know what happens to them? They either go crazy, or they kill themselves. Consider the high suicide rates in the West when people reach their retirement age. When they retire, a great number of them kill themselves because they don't see any point in living. Because work always blurred their vision. It kept them going, kept them going. But they didn't really stand or stop for a moment to think about the reality of this life. Now, these will bring us, or this point will bring us to more elaboration. We'll talk about this after we have a short break, and we'll still, we say to our viewers as well, stay tuned, we're coming back soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. We're still talking about what, why do we need faith for? Why, do we, why, are, why are we talking about it? Uh, you know, why is it so essential in our lives? And we said that actually it answers the questions that everyone has. You know, we have these questions about business when we set it up. 
We have this business about, or we have these questions even about when we establish a family. When we take any further step in our lives, we always ask these questions. So why do we ask these questions when it comes to worldly things, but when it comes to our life? The most precious thing that we have, we forget to ask these questions. You know why? Because we always grow up in a certain environment and we take things for granted. This is why I always say, always, with everything you do in your life, put everything to the test. Try to make your own way. Make your own choices so you are responsible of your own choices and your own actions that follow from your choices. Okay, do you have any comment about these now? How important these questions are in our lives? Okay, please, Professor. Okay, let me introduce you, uh, Professor Abdul Rahman. Mashallah, you graduated from the USA in applied linguistics. Can you please just introduce yourself briefly? Yes, Dr. Abdul Rahman Abu Malham. Uh, Dr. Abdul Rahman Abu Malham, uh, I'm PhD holder from uh, Texas A&M University in the United States in uh, social linguistics. Actually, uh, my master's was in applied linguistics, mm -hmm. and uh, currently I'm teaching at Al Balqa Applied University here in Jordan at Erbid University uh, College. I'm extremely proud. Um, I, I would like to go back to the uh, question that you uh, asked earlier about, quote-unquote, are people actually happy? Are people really or truly happy? To me, I believe on the surface, lots of people, most people seem to be happy. And I, I would certainly underline the word seem to be happy. But in reality, uh, the vast majority of us and uh, the vast majority of people in general are not happy, especially when you dig uh, deep down inside them and you really ask them questions and they want to be honest and sincere with each other. Um, the, the question about work and being workaholics and things like that yeah. and not having time to uh -huh. actually even think about who we are or people in general, uh, who we are and where we're going, where we're coming from, actually, everybody has... Everybody has needs, and that is certainly true. And those needs to be uh, nurtured. Uh, yeah. They need to be to be uh, watered, just like a plant. Actually, that needs to be taken care of. Yeah. Uh, I think here the most important needs that we're talking about really are spiritual needs and psychological mm -hmm. needs. Everybody mm -hmm. has those spiritual needs. Everybody has those those uh, psychological needs, uh, regardless of who we are and regardless of our uh, religious uh, beliefs, for example, and, and affiliation yeah. in, in, in this case. Uh, those spiritual beliefs and uh, needs and psychological needs actually need to be fulfilled some way, somehow. Mm -hmm. Now, this can certainly be related directly to the question of faith and why is it important to have faith? Why is it important for us to actually have a supernatural uh, 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 being, let's say, that we believe in regardless of what we call it, whether we call it Allah, whether we call it God, or whatever it is that we want to call it in, yeah. in this logical or philosophical sense. Yes. Uh, now, if we do this, if we have, if we get to the point through pondering, through deep and thorough thinking, we get to the point to where we know that we are not alone. Now we believe in a supernatural being. Yes. That is an escape for us in a sense, you know. That is a safe haven for us. We, yes. That gives us a sense of safety, a sense of security, a sense of tranquility, if you will, at the end. And then we would be, uh, for the most part, content. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily happy, but content with whatever it is that we do. That's very good. Uh, Actually, uh, Professor, let me... Um... Uh, let me just note that <laughs> you pushed us ahead. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, go but ahead. <laughs> it's very good, it's very good. Thank anyway, you, it just paves the way for us to carry on or to move on from this question. Uh, let me conclude with this question is that, or these questions, they are scientific questions. You know, if you, uh, if we always, you know, if we try to check the scientific methods in, in research all around the world, we always find them asking these questions, the WH questions. Why do we ask these questions? As I said, we always ask them in business and in companies. You know, when any company or firm or establishment, when they make or when they write down their objectives, do you know how they get their objectives? Through asking these questions. Because they become the blueprint. They become the roadmap, sort of, the roadmap right. for this kind of company or this kind of establishment. Now, this takes us to a very important concept that belief is highly related to. Now, as I said, uh, uh, just to answer to some of the points that the doctor, mashallah, uh, mentioned, they're very good. But as I said, we have to present them to cover all perspectives. I totally agree with you, but sometimes we have to break things down so to help people assimilate them as well. Now, 
uh, to talk, the suicide rates, I will come to these, inshallah. But as I said, the main reason for faith to be very important that it answers the questions that every man has about himself and about the world he lives in. And these questions to some people have become a big taboo. They don't want to get into that because they don't have answers. And if they start to dig up for answers, trying to find answers, what will happen to them? They know that they will have to change their life drastically. And people are always afraid of change. That's right. People are always afraid. You know why? Because change means you have to make new decisions. You, you have to do away with the convenience that you are used to. You have to get used to a new way of life. And people are afraid of that. People always like other people to make decisions for them. Because when other people make decisions for you, you're not responsible. You're not accountable. But if you make your own decisions, you have to fight for your own decisions. You have to dig your way through. You have to get there. And this is some, one of the most critical points in our lives. Actually, our you know, uh, abstinence from uh, getting or asking the questions and trying to find out our way in life this is one of the main reasons that brings to us misery. Because no one understands you within the creation more than you yourself. You are the one who understands yourself. So and as human beings, actually, we always, uh, if you don't mind, as human beings, we, we always tend to take the easy way out. Actually. Very good. That's easy right. way. We always say, see, even though we will pay for it at the end. That's right. Now, so these, this is why these questions are very important. So people... Avoid to ask them because, or think about them, because they know they have to start searching and they don't want to do that. They want to have more money. They want to work harder and get more money. They want the, uh, the present or the, uh, let the, immediate, me say the, outcome, actually. the immediate outcome, they the immediate enjoyment the immediate of outcome. this life. That's it. And they don't want to get or to sacrifice in order to get a better outcome. This right. is, this is a very important point. And, uh, Thank you, for, Thank you so uh, Professor, for getting us to this way. I'll, uh, let me just try to get to the point of map, map. Now, these questions lead us to the concept of map. Faith is basically a map for us, how to live this life. It is, let me say, as I mentioned previously, the chromosomes, as in the cell. They are the blueprint, actually, for this life. Now, these questions, when we ask them, they give us the map. Now, tell me, as human beings, you, we use map, geographical maps. Why are they important? Why do we need maps? I have an answer to the question. Please, uh, Professor, can you pass on the mic? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, it can be said that the faith rules uh, in the human and in the individual's uh, lives. Uh, we have two uh, different uh, kinds of people. Uh, uh, these are uh, uh, optimistic and pessimistic. As for optimistic, uh, um, uh, uh, they are who embody uh, the hopeful people who, yes. who followed their worldly pleasures and uh, reached a very high classes of society, of society. Okay. And they committed suicide to get rid of this life because there is, uh, there is no okay. any faith to direct them. Uh, to yes. direct them. Okay, I don't want to jump to... This is actually... <laughs> you're getting us right to the end of the, our episode. Okay, I'll try to take it step by step. I'll come to this point. When we come to this point, I would like to say us to comment on this. But now, uh, the question is, why do we need maps geographically? Why do we need maps? What do they do? Muhammad, please, at the back. Okay. Simply, we need maps in order to get to our objective. What if we don't have a map? We will uh, lose the way. Lose the way. Yeah. Lose the way. So, it will save us at the end of day. It will save us time. It will save us effort. It will save us the frustration as well. The psychological effect or side effect of it. Okay. So, this is why... So they are very important. If we don't have a map, we lose our way, we waste our time, and you know, any reasonable human being would use a map if there is a map. And what, what happens if you get a wrong map? Uh, please uh, pass on the mic. What happens if you have a wrong map? You are totally lost. <laughs> Worse than <laughs> not having a map. Maybe with a map, without a map, you can make out your way. Uh, okay, hold on. Uh, we can make, make your way through after some, <laughs> some, some time. But, you know, with the wrong map, you're totally lost. And you will suffer from a lot of frustration. Now, uh, I don't want to dwell more on this, on the map, but I want to take it to the concept of faith. Why? I will let me uh, share this incident that happened to me. Uh, let's share that. In London, I had a brother, a friend of mine. He had... Uh, 
a videotape, VHS. He wanted to convert it or to dub it into a DVD. And remember, we were in London, central London, and uh, he started looking in the yellow pages, trying to find someone who could offer this service. He found someone in an area called Carsholton. Carsholton is to the, in the far south of London. Actually, it is in Surrey. It's in, it's in another county. Now, we rang the man, and he gave us the address. And it was something like Richard Road. And we made a mistake. We started looking up A to Z, London A to Z, we looked up Richard Street, not Richard Road. You know what happened? We ended up in North London. Wow. In North London. It took us two hours to get back to that man in Cushalton, South London. Now, that was really very bad. And then I realized it's very important to have the correct information and the correct map. Once you have it, you'll get to your objective, to your goal, easily without frustration, without waste of time. Now, you know, today in psychology and in education, you know, they developed the concept, which is already existent, but they just developed it, which is the mind map. The mind map is a very effective and revolutionary way in thinking and in studying. It basically tells you, it shows you everything that goes around in your mind. When you have a thought, everything relevant to it, you draw it, so you can see everything. They tell you to draw things how they happen in your, exactly in your mind. It's very helpful. You see, so the concept of map is very essential in the life of a human being. So this is why actually it, and it caused, you know, uh, some kind of revolution in results in so many schools that it was applied in. The uh, mind, the mind maps, they are very important. Now what about our lives? Don't you think that we should have a map about our life? We should have a map. Definitely we should have a map. But who, who puts the map, the geographical maps? A to Z, who writes that? Uh, 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 geographical maps <laughs> experts experts <laughs> people who know about this people who've studied this and they know all the ins and outs okay so what about the mind map who's the best person to make a mind map the one uh, this is what the specialists in this field tell you the best one to make a mind map for a thought that, uh, that you have is yourself yes. is yourself because you know all the ins and outs you know everything about it now, what about this life? Who knows all the ins and outs? Who, who knows how to put the right map for it? The, the one who made it, the one who created it. That's a very logical conclusion, but unfortunately, most people spend their lives, you know, trying to go around, go around that, seek means around that. They don't want to hit the point straight because they think it will have some consequences that will cause them more effort and cause them harder choices maybe in their lives. Now, the, what is this map called? If God created us, do you think He left us without a map? Now we have maps. The whole picture is, it all cons consists of a couple of segments. Like someone who has never come across, we talked about the Quran, we have established that point. Okay? Now, where is the other map? Someone who never heard of the Quran. How could they understand the reality of this life? This will, you know, I would like you to pay attention. Now, this question will lead us to the first point we talked about, the questions. Where do these questions come from? Where do they come from? Why do human beings need to know where they came from and they were, where they are heading to? Where? I think we all have something uh, yes. come from deep from our... This is the our thing heart, I'm looking for. Which is a common sense, a natural disposition that... Very good. People say common sense, especially when it comes to the reality of this life. It is the natural disposition. It is the natural disposition. And this is something many people have ignored. And they paid the price and they are still paying and they will keep paying the price unless they acknowledge this fact. Why do we ask the question who we are, where we came from, who created this world, where did it come from, and where are we going to end up? Who put in us the, the urge to seek answers for these questions? But still we seek means around it, we play around, we try to avoid them. Now we will talk more about this after we have a short break. I will say to our viewers, stay tuned. Sisters, to increase your 
خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا Learning how to recite the Quran properly Learning the meaning of what we recite Including the ahkam from the verses which we recite Trying to implement what we learn in our daily life We we'll listen to the participants and the guests We'll take your phone calls We're going to recite life We'll listen to your recitation And we'll correct it according to the rules and regulations Which we'll state in each episode Now your dream will come true. Will come true. In- Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're still watching Inspirations. We're dealing with a very important subject that is the map for our lives, it is, as it is very important and very crucial to understand what this map is and where it comes from. You hit the point, which is the, that these questions come from a natural thing or natural feeling that was put inside us. And this is from the mercy of our Creator. That He is telling us. Every now and then, this, you know, this natural disposition comes up to the surface. And it always pushes you to seek answers and people ignore it. You know how? With excessive drugs, alcohol, indulgence in sin, in evil actions, in homosexuality, and perverted actions. Because they want to run away from the truth. Keep yourself, and ask anyone who, who got himself you know, in, the, in this kind of stuff, like in alcohol or in drugs. You know what happens the first time they drink or they take drugs? They break down psychologically. They feel that they have made a grave sin against themselves. Ask them, I, I spoke to many of them. And I remember one day, uh, I was in, in Hyde Park in London, and I, I, gave, I gave just a short talk for about half an hour, and then someone from Libya came to me. He was born Muslim, brought up as Muslim, and he went to London to study English. And he said, I spent some time with some bad friends, and they took me to drinking. And I always said, no, 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 no. One day, I gave up, and I drank some, I drank some alcohol. And he came to me, he was crying. He said, I've destroyed myself. All the good things I thought about myself were gone. I don't think I'm, I'm here for, to do something so low and decadent in my life. This, these are exactly his words. You know what, what his friends said? All those who drink, take drugs, they all go through the same thing. You know what happens? Their company, they always say to them, drink more and you will forget. Now the map came up to the surface, it wants to defend itself. It wants to defend the pure nature of the human being. That is always looking for the truth, for what is good. They will say, drink more and you will forget. Destroy it, destroy it, destroy it. Some people live and they have killed, they have slaughtered this beautiful feeling in their hearts, the beautiful urge. Now, we, this is what we need to nourish, we need to give life to. Because this fitra is a very important map. Actually, it's like the compass. You know, the compass always gives, gives, helps us when we have the map to give the right direction. This is the compass. When you do something wrong, it always tells you no. The soul is always calling us to think about the reality of this life. And we say, no, we don't want to think about that. The soul always wants to ask us questions about what we are doing here. What is the point of doing this? But we don't want to listen to that. The soul is always reminding us that this life is not eternal. That this life is not the real life. It's only a test. But we turn away from that. We don't want to listen. We we prefer the status quo. We want the immediate pleasure. We're not ready to sacrifice. Now, the fitra, this is the word for it. This natural disposition that some people call common sense, this is the map. It always asks you these questions, who you are, what you are, what is this life all about? Where did we come from? Where are we heading to? Because it needs these answers and people suppress it. People suppress it. What happens when we do that? Now I would like to have your comments about these questions 
and this map and how these are very important in our lives. Do you have something, uh, Basil? I'll come back to you, inshallah. Yes, without a doubt that uh, when, you, uh, when you talk about your uh, friends that you met, uh, people that have went in the wrong direction, uh, uh, time after time after time, see, the problem is that that numbing feeling comes into you. That's what's so unfortunate. Uh, maybe at the beginning it might feel bad, but then after that, you know what? It starts feeling very bad to a point where it's too numb to feel bad anymore. Mm -hmm. So, as a matter of fact, yes, you might get to a point where you actually, uh, you cannot, no way you can destroy your fitra, your, th th that feeling. No way. You will always feel guilty, but you cannot get out of it. It's almost as you have been uh, just shackled and uh, dragged down this. And the problem with this, people I spoke to, just like you, they always keep saying this one thing. I know it's just a matter of time. I'm going to get out of it very soon. I know. That. Let me just enjoy it a little. They're not enjoying it. Let's just face it. They're having the worst time. One of the things that they're trying to do is the the uh, the, the the worst the worst thing that that uh, that they're doing is that they're living for the wrong objectives. Let's just face it. We have two objectives, mm -hmm. uh, which are the materialism, the need to acquire more, and need for approval. Okay. I, I want my parents to approve what I'm doing. That's very care. important, really. It's yeah. extremely important. Mm -hmm. My teacher, my I'm not. Do, you know what? They're not living for a higher authority. They're living for a few people. If he is happy, I'm happy. If he is angry, I'm angry. That's the, the type of, of, of mentality they live for. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Therefore, they start diver diverting from the right path, slowly but surely, and then that numb feeling comes into their life, and all of a sudden they... I, I, I want to say lose their fatna no fitra, they always know for a fact they're doing the wrong thing. Yes. Yet, they just keep on doing it and getting number and number for the fact. And the worst part about this, it's not just what they do to themselves, it's what they do to society. Mm -hmm. They're never satisfied until they drag some others with them. Yes. They want to drag you down. Let's, hey, let's have fun. That's let's, let's, it's, it's just, you know. Okay, they're seeking for approval, maybe. Even sort of though they know <laughs> they're destroying you. Yes. They want to, yeah, seeking approval, need for approval. I, I, you know, I want to be something in my life. Okay. And that's what it is. How do you think, Basil, people can get out of this, of this kind of uh, mentality? Mentality, I, I tell you this without a doubt. <clears throat> you touched on that just a little bit ago. Changing your attitude towards life, changing this perspective that you have about life. It is very clear that you have a certain attitude that is not working. You need someone else to give you the right attitude. Once we get that right attitude, inshallah, I believe as a Muslim, of course, mm -hmm. is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at life. That's the way that I, I'm so hungry and thirsty to, to get. Mm -hmm. and once I get that, I know for a fact, who am I living for? For the satisfaction and pleasure for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by uh, worshipping Him in everything I do. Why? Because He is with me wherever I am. That's the, li that's the life. That's what living is all about. Mm -hmm. And that's the meaning of Islam. Yes. I, one thing I, I love about this, the, the, this religion, the name of Islam, if anybody knows Arabic, it means is this lamb. Submission, surrender, you know, that, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but of course, this might be a little too advanced for what we're saying, but... I'm just trying to connect this fitra thing with the people who are not doing relevant. their life. It is in relevant. A way. Okay, so it is I relevant just... and, and, and actually it makes I can, it puts everything in, within a frame, within one frame. Absolutely. Very good. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Is that basically uh, the concept of the map? If you keep ignoring it, it still come up. Ignoring it will still come up. But the more you divert from it, now the worse your situation will get. And as you said, you will drag more people. But now, let's talk uh, even individually. You know, what should we do with this fitra? And I'm telling you, everyone feels that at one stage of their life or another. There must be. I remember, you know, some, a few months ago, there was one brother from England, a British revert. His name was Zakaria. He was with us. And he talked about himself when he was about 10 years old. And he said that he was swimming in, in the Mediterranean Sea in Spain. And he didn't realize that the tide pulled him inside the sea and he was about to drown. And he said the only thing, or the first thing I thought about, he was brought up in a Christian family who was practically an atheist family. They didn't really practice Christianity. He said, I never thought about God. I never really heard about God or really gave a, a sincere thought to it. 
So he said, the first thing came to my mind that there is a creator and he's the only one who can get me out of that. And I said to myself, I, he said, I started screaming saying, please, please help me. If you help me, I will be good. I will be honest. I will be thankful. That's at 10 years old. That's very n- natural. You know, a couple of weeks ago, ago, we had the brother from Denmark. We had brother Ja'far. And he, he talked about his father, that he was an atheist. And when his son Ja'far was born, and he was in a very bad state, and doctors told him that he, will die, he would die straight away. He wanted his son baptized because he thought that God is there and he could give him a better chance to live. Now that's the fitrah comes out. The thing is, the more sin we do, and the more we ignore this fitrah, the more cover and dust we will put in it. But still it has the force to rise up, come to the surface, and always, rep- always reprimand the ones who do good that you are doing good. Remind us of this true purpose of our existence. Now, we want to utilize this concept. We don't just want to talk, want to talk about it theoretically. We want to utilize it and see how we can benefit from it. Let's, let me say first that a great portion of the depression and psychological disorders in the West and in the world as a whole are caused because they are not following the map, the, let me say, the spiritual map of themselves. We have to understand ourselves that this natural disposition is part of us. If you don't satisfy it, it will cause you problems. It will cause you disorder. And now, you know, if you don't drink, if you don't eat, what will happen to you? Your body will, will need this, will ask for this, and will start to give you pains and ache, then it will fade, and then you will become weak, and maybe you'll end up dying. Now some people, they don't satisfy the need of the heart or this need of the natural disposition until their hearts die. And this is very bad. They become very, uh, some kind of cruel, harsh on people. Uh, They have very bad thoughts about this life. And we have seen many of these in wars because they kill men, uh, weak men, women, children, old men. They They don't see that life has any value except in killing and torturing others. These people's hearts are dead. So this fitra, this, well, I would like you as well, and our viewers as well, to understand this important point. The fitra, remember this word, the fitra is your natural disposition, your natural way that is in your heart. Always when it stops you to ask you about your course in life, don't turn away from it. Listen to it, listen to the voice of your heart. I promised you to come back to you. If you want uh, to, to make a good map for us, we will. Uh, we must uh, nourish uh, uh, our uh, intuition or instinct uh, to uh, by uh, making g- g- good deeds to lead us to the path uh, right, uh, the right path. Very good. Actually, this is the second point that I was talking about. Uh, some people kill their foot rather try to suppress it. We will. We. If you really want happiness, if you want success in this life and achievement, really nourish this fitra. It is the beauty, you know, happiness comes from it actually. Happiness comes from it. That is the source of happiness. Happiness, as the doctor said at the very beginning, it's not in money. But we had to break it down to come to this conclusion. It's not in money, it's not in wealth. Because many people who are rich, many people who are famous, many people who have all the, uh, you know, materialist pleasures of this world, those people of self aggrandizement and uh, sort of worldly achievements. These are the people who mainly commit suicide. We all know about Elvis Presley, that he killed himself with an overdose of uh, drugs. We know that Marilyn Monroe, despite her wealth and uh, her fame and her success, she killed herself and so many people, so on and so forth. Okay, I think we're running out of time. We have three minutes. So please, if you have any points about, about this, to the point, if you have, let me start with you, Professor, please. Can you pass on the mic? Can you bring... Yeah, what yes. about, say... What I'd like to say here is just uh, to briefly comment on uh, this sense of uh, uh, what you call common sense or uh, maybe the natural uh, disposition or maybe sense of intuition, for example, or sense of innateness, whatever you want to call it. That is there, actually, uh, as human beings were all born. Uh, that way, regardless of our religious uh, beliefs or or affiliation, as we said, uh, you know, before. But... uh, Something else that's really important, uh, and, and we know that it, it is important, is actually how we are brought up and our environment and the things that we have uh, to go through and our own experience. 
in life. The question of peer pressure that you mentioned earlier is extremely important. And I know from uh, living in the United States for 17 years, I know that this is something that's extremely important. Uh, children uh, and teenagers in particular most of the time have to or tend to go ahead and give in to peer pressure from their friends mm -hmm. so that they can gain, as my friend over there said, social approval, the approval of their own friends. They do not want to feel different, thinking that by, you know, it's a sense of assimilation or a need for assimilation to, uh, they want to become a part of the mainstream, in other words. They do not yes. want to feel different. They want to and fit in. Exactly, they yeah. want to fit in. And they need to understand that by being different, by not giving in, Okay, by being different, that does not necessarily mean, mean that they are being bad or they're being worse or yes. they're not, uh, you know, uh, accepted in society or whatever. They have to use their own minds. They yes. have to use their, they have to go back to their intuition. They have to, as you said, listen to their hearts and listen to the voice of their, their yes. heart That's to be able to, uh, yeah. get on the, the this straight path. This is what we're calling the way. people actually. Sorry, uh, I have to interrupt you, Professor. We Thanks, run out sorry. of time. It's over. Uh, inshallah, in uh, coming episodes, I'll give you more opportunity to comment on it. But um, I would ask the director to give us one minute to mention some statistics that will... And with these statistics, I call the people to always listen to the voice of your heart, try to nurture this fitra, just to see whether people are really happy with the materialistic life they have. You know, in the USA, there is a suicide every 17 minutes. And these are official statistics. In the USA, there are over 30,000 people who kill themselves annually. 30,000 people kill themselves annually. 300,000 survive a suicide attempt. Now, that's a huge number. Let's see whether people are really happy or not. Now, suicide is the third leading cause of death for the young people. That's in America. The young people, I mean, from age 15 to 24. Now, these are sort of... They just started, you know, dealing with life. Now they choose to end their own lives. That's the shocking statistics. You know, in the, uh, let me see, in the UK, okay, suicide rate is 20 persons out of every 100,000. And there are other shocking statistics about depression, actually. Uh, the, some of the, Reuters Health actually indicates that there are 25 million Americans who seek treatment every year, treatment uh, for depression. 25 million people seek treatment for depression. Now, one in five Americans are depressed or unhappy. That, this is from Reuters Health. You can check that uh, from their website. Now, what does these figures tell, tell us? They speak louder than words, I believe. Always listen to the voice of your heart. Understand the reality of this, our existence in this world. And believe me, you will find contentment and real happiness. I thank you all for being with us. Thank you for all your contributions. And I apologize for not taking all your comments, but we run out of time. And I tend to all of you saying, thank you very much for being with us. May Allah reward you and us. Until we meet next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.